Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Independent Street Tarot and Seasons and Ritual, and I'm here to talk about the energies today. Um, it's July 3rd for July 4th and July 5th. Um, I might go into, I might save the, the Dark Moon reading for the 5th. I'm not sure, so we'll just see. Um, but there's obviously a lot going on <laughs> in the heavens and on Earth, so... Let's get into it. So today is July 3rd. Yesterday on July 2nd, Neptune stationed retrograde at 29 degrees of Pisces. And this is important for many reasons. Um, Neptune was at 29 degrees in 55 minutes. It was about to move into Aries, which is the new beginning, right? Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So when we hit Aries season, um, it's always that it's that phoenix rising, right? That that rebirth, that renewal. Um, but uh, Neptune was like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've got some stuff we got to take care of. So um, it stopped at 29 degrees. And um, I learned from Pam Gregory that the 29 degree mark to of mutable signs or 28 degree mark immutable signs to the two degree mark of cardinal signs is the world access. So we're feeling this Neptune stationing retrograde in the world. So this is like, oh, like we're all starting to pay attention. Remember Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. It is the mystic. Um, it is about our spiritual side, our spiritual self. Um, but also lower Pisces is where we get into addiction and illusion. Um, smoke and mirrors, if you will. And I really believe that we're coming out of this age of Pisces and into this age of Aquarius. And the fact that Saturn and Neptune are both in Pisces, it's like um, Saturn is bringing us some stability, right? And, and helping us see through these illusions. Um, and Neptune in its home sign, I, I think wants to kind of reclaim what it's there for. You know, Neptune um, is dreams. Uh, you know, Neptune rules the oceans. Um, Neptune is water, but it's like we need water to live. Um, and, you know, the, the age of Pisces has not been kind. Um, it was very, to most of us, it's been very patriarchal. Um, and so Saturn in there and, and, and um, Neptune waiting to move into Aries to me is signaling we've, we're still clearing out this um age of Pisces energy, we're starting to get stabilized where things were destabilized. And, um, you know, having Saturn in there with Neptune is signaling that there is a bond there that has to has to be rebuilt, right? There has to be some trust rebuilt, like we have to get um, a better storyline, like we can't just keep falling for all these smoke and mirrors. So yesterday on the second, uh, Neptune stationed retrograde and Neptune and, and just to fast forward, but Neptune and, and, and Saturn will actually go into Aries together at zero degrees in 2026. That also signals to me, we're clearing out a lot of stuff, you know, before they move into, um, Aries together, you know, those, those are those, those zero degrees, especially with these big planets going in there are always karmic turning points. So we, in the United States, um, we got some news from our Supreme Court um, uh, on Monday. I can't believe it's only Wednesday. What a freaking week, huh? Um, on Monday, we got some news on the Supreme Court, which was a, like, oh, wow. Um, yesterday, uh, Neptune turned uh, retrograde because we're going to have some time to think about this. We're going to have some time to uh, go over uh, chart these waters, rechart these waters, um, if you will. These aren't uncharted waters, you guys, but we're gonna rechart these waters. Um, and then today, oh, and also what happened yesterday was that, um, let me see, let me check my notes. Uh, the sun was squaring both of the nodes of fate yesterday so that was the midpoint between the eclipses okay um so the sun in cancer was squaring um aries lunar node in aries north node um in aries and then the lunar south node in um libra right 
and that sun in cancer and you know these feminine signs and cancer and pisces and venus and taurus uh the moon these are to me all the big the heavy hitters moving forward and, and I'll, I'll explain why so the sun is in cancer um cancer is our solar plexus this is how i read it by the way um, others may disagree, but solar uh, is our solar plexus. The sun is the uh, masculine inside of us. It's our movement. Um, the sun rules Leo. Okay. So um, Leo is fixed fire, but the sun moves one degree a day, right? That's how we have our calendar. And then the moon moves about, moves signs every two and a half days. So right now our sun is in cancer and cancer is the divine feminine. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Um, cancer is our home. Um, cancer is how we take care of ourselves. Cancer is when we decide, uh, you know, how, how we need to set our boundaries. Um, if we've outgrown our home, uh, where do we find a new one, right? If the little crab has outgrown its shell, it needs a bigger shell. So the sun in cancer um, understands this, right? That's that divine masculine energy. And that divine masculine energy is how we move, right? And the divine feminine energy is how we receive. Um, and that's how, and that's how to me, the, the masculine and feminine energies work together. And I see this cancer season, a huge shift in how the masculine and feminine energies work together. I feel like as we keep moving forward, it's going to be harder to differentiate between masculine and feminine in a sense um but we'll cross that bridge when we get there so the sun is in cancer the sun is the sun is at home in every sign um that's how i read it um the sun is listening to the moon because the moon rules cancer we're coming up on this dark moon on the fifth um so the sun in cancer squaring the nodes, right, is asking us, where are the building blocks? Are we? Do we have the building blocks to keep our home safe? Do we have the building blocks to show up in our home authentically? Do we have the building blocks to get rid of toxic people that are keeping us out of balance, right? So the sun is asking these questions, and, it, and it's still there. I know it was like yesterday, but on the second, but it's still there, right? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves or noticing if they're just kind of coming up um, organically, as I like to say, um, with like people, places, friend groups, um, and especially family. You know, the family is always a theme in cancer season, but I think it's even a bigger theme now because of all the squares to Saturn. Saturn usually represents um, old man energy so it could be like the dad or like the um patriarch of the family and then we have cancer right who's the moon um and that is matriarchal energy so a lot of times around this year we are with our families you know a lot of times around this um time of year we are going to cookouts and in family and friends functions you know and this is a good time to really just check in with yourself and be say like do I still want to go to these functions um do I still feel like I need to fit into these constraints that I feel like maybe these people put on me right because this is a big time of liberation at the same time that uh people are really trying to put a dominance on things it's a very interesting ju juxtaposition when Pisces I mean when um Neptune is at 29 degrees uh Pisces it's usually when these Pisces tra transits come in with Neptune, I would say, or maybe just even Neptunian transits, but it's like, it's a time of creativity. Like we get more creative and um, the sun being in cancer, right? I mean, most people would say, well, I don't say most people, but a lot of astrologers say that once, you know, the sun is in cancer, you know, it gets hot, right? Like uh, we want to just like kind of relax and take a vacation for the rest of our lives. Um which coincides a lot with, you know, us in the States with, um, you know, the fourth, but most of my friends that I've been talking to are working on things and not like uh, angrily working on things or feeling stressed out on working on things, but finding joy in working on things, right? One of my friends is starting to sell ice cream. She loves it. 
Um, like I mentioned a couple of videos ago, I organized my bathroom. It was great. You know, um, one of my friends is organizing the shed in the back of her um, house, you know, just like these things that maybe at one time seemed like a chore, but because we know it's helping us get our lives in order. It's like helping us show up authentically. It's giving away my friend selling ice cream. It's a giving away for her to talk with her neighbors, you know, like these it's, it, it's work, right? She makes money from it, but it's, it's so much more, it's so much more rewarding. And, and she's feeling creative again. And she's stepping outside of a box, you know, that she didn't, you know, it's like something she didn't think she would do, you know, like she's an artist and an activist. Um, and so a lot of times when we give ourselves these labels, we think this is how we art and activate. Um, and right now she's selling ice cream, right? So it's about this expansion, right? Of how we see ourselves. And that is coming in with that Pluto and Aquarius, um, we do call it influence for sure. But it's also this idea of showing up authentically, right? That um, lunar north node in, in, in Aries, how are we showing up authentically? Well, we might've thought for a very long time showing up authentically looked like this, but now we're seeing actually it looks like this because I've been doing the work, right? I've been taking the time to figure out who uh, we are, you know, who I am. And then this is how I show up authentically. And it and it feels different in that heart space. So you guys keep working with that because that is going to be the difference between basically just like giving up and, and the difference between giving up and the difference between fueling the revolution, right? If we're fueling the revolution with love, compassion, authenticity, um, art, right? That's what moves us forward. That's what starts new conversations, right? That's what starts, um, that's what gives us courage, right? That's what gives us courage. That's where we say no, where we never said no before, right? And people are like, oh, okay, right? But that's who we are, showing up authentically, right? North node in Aries, South node in Libra, right? Getting rid of people pleasing. Oh, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, or, oh yeah, I got to show up because I don't know, fill in the blanks a million times. And now it's like, no, actually I'm not going to show up. Um, and bringing things back into balance. And I, and I laugh at that because, you know, Libra is the scales. And a lot of times I feel like with astrology, we're always searching for a meaning. And I really think the self node in Libra is like, we need to bring things back into balance all, and everything, you know, like we can't keep polluting the earth, you know, we can't keep, um, you know, wage inequality can't keep happening. Um, and you just, it can run the gambit. Everything needs to be bring back, brought back into balance. So we have the nodes there. The sun was squaring them yesterday. We're still in that energy. Um, same time, you know, Neptune and, and and Saturn are both now retrograde in Pisces. So this is still all these reality checks are coming in, right? <laughs> like the reality check about how the um, Supreme Court has been hijacked for over 30 years is a swift kick in the fucking crotch here in America. Let me tell you, right? And moving on to the 4th of July, I will just say this. So our birthday for America is July 4th, right? So America is a cancer, everybody. How wild is that? I don't know why I never really thought about it, but I am now. So um, America is a cancer. So she is ruled by the moon. Um, and I was thinking about this this morning before I did this. I think that was so interesting that America is a cancer. That's a feminine sign. We have Lady Liberty, which is a feminine, you know, archetype. We have um, Lady Justice, you know, she's blind, right? All these feminine um I guess archetypes here in America. Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm forgetting, you know, you know, I mean the world is Gaia, right? All these things, but that's for the world. Um, which maybe is important for us to remember because of the world axis and Neptune's there. Um, but you know, the United States has in, in the world, right, has been under this patriarchal um rule for so long, and yet everything we love or look up to or think has some sort of merit and I know I am blanket statementing here so don't put it in the comments is usually a woman figure you know um 
And so I think that is coming back. And again, side note, I don't hate men. You know, the patriarchy did not do anything well. He didn't help about men. And men are really starting to realize that because besides the fact that women are picking the bear, but women that are, but men that have partners who need abortion care aren't getting it. And they don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about your wife or your girlfriend or your partner or whatever. Um, so the patriarchy isn't, um, it's just power, right? And now we're starting to really understand power. Um, and it's not good. Um, power is power. And I always find it interesting that when people think they are on the right side of power for power's sake, right? There's really nothing there, right? So like like the Supreme Court for us, like um, obviously a lot of dark money from Citizens United. Um, cancer, by the way, for the United States is in the ninth house. Ninth house rules um, legal affairs. Uh, <laughs> can't make this up and foreign affairs. So I think we're about to really get surprised about how much foreign money has been affecting our lives here in America. And I mean that on both sides, the political party that um, Democrat in uh, New York just got voted in because of that one pack that's heavily Israel based, right? millions into his campaign so they could throw out the other progressive who said, I don't believe in this war in Israel, right? So no side in America is immune from this dark money from foreign countries. So I think we're going to get a real rude awakening on that as well here in America. Um, but all is not lost. You know, all is not lost. All of this has to come to light um, so we can start making new decisions. We can start asking different questions. Mercury went into um, Leo yesterday. So it was at zero degrees of Leo. Leo is the opposite side of Aquarius. And right now Aquarius has Pluto in it and Pluto is retrograde in Aquarius. So um, Leo fixed fire, right? Ruled by the sun. Sun is in Cancer. Mercury packed his little bags and went into Leo and looked over there and was waving at Pluto and Pluto was waving back and they just had a conversation. Um, a lot of times with astrology, when things are opposite each other, you know, the idea was they immediately went into like an arm wrestling match or something, they locked horns and all that stuff, which is, I don't know, I don't, I don't see it that way. So I see it like, oh, they're opposite of each other. So they have a really good view of what's going on on either side. I always say like, if you're at a football game and you look at the other side of the stadium, you can see kind of like, oh, they brought this many fans or, you know, oh, they shoved the band up in the corner, right? All those things, right? When you're opposite of something, you should be able to see a wide expanse, okay? So as Mercury keeps moving through Leo, he's gonna start saying what he saw over there with Pluto. You know, Mercury um, is the communicator. Mercury rules um, Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. Pluto is an Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. So because they were sitting across from each other from the table, it's like I say, like if you see an old friend and you're sitting across from the table and you're holding hands and you're talking and all that stuff, right? Okay. Well, you might be talking really close, right? Because there's a lot of other shit going on. But then when you leave, okay, well, that, that information either stays close or, um, you know, Mercury's a talker. So it starts to get disseminated. But these are two fixed signs, right? These are two fixed signs. So this is like, um, I always say like the fixed signs are the temples. Um, they're bringing in all this knowledge, you know, Pluto rules Scorpio. Scorpio's a water sign. Um, there's a bunch going on in Pisces. That's a water sign. Sun is in Cancer, which is a water sign. They're all influencing each other. This idea that um, astrology was very compartmentalized um, just doesn't <laughs> float with me um, at all. Like everyone, if you, the way that I see the planets is that they hold space and they do know how to work with each other, right? Just like how nature knows how to work with each other as humans, you know, we're always like, oh, it's at war with itself. It's doing this. And it's like, no, it knows what to do to keep itself balanced. You know, we're the ones coming in here and poking things. Um, the planets know 
what to do. The planets hold space. The planets um, want to start having different conversations with each other, quite honestly. And that's what we're here to do. We're to help facilitate these, these questions, right? These questions and answers. So moving forward, um, Venus started a trine um, yesterday. A trine, you guys get your pen out. A trine's 120 degrees um, with Saturn and Neptune. So the moon coming in for this dark moon will be in this trine as well. Um, and again, the sun, the sun is our masculine. The sun is how we express ourselves, right? The sun is how we move, right? And when the sun is in the moon's house of cancer, there, there is no power struggle here. The sun understands at a deep level, this is what the moon does. This is how the moon shows up. This is the moon, you know, being her best, right? And so it's not that he acquiesces, but it's just this new energy of, oh, I get it, you know? For the rest of us, I think the sun always knew this, but it didn't really fit into that patriarchal, you know, norm. So the sun and the moon are together. And now they're talking to Saturn and Neptune right together um again those reality checks what are you guys showing us what are you guys um, bringing to the surface from underneath the depths of the water right saturn what is it that you're saying we need to get stable or we're gonna not be stable you know so the sun and the moon are having this conversation mercury has gone into leo the sun rules leo Okay, so when the sun and the moon are having this conversation with um, Saturn and Neptune, Mercury's in the sun's home sign. It can come back and be like, hey, you guys, what are we talking about over there, right? What are we talking about over there? Because on top of that, right, Venus is still in Cancer. Mars is in Venus's home sign of Taurus, right? Long story even longer. Um, it is this idea, Venus will move into Leo, and then, um, I mean, then the moon will, and then the sun will, right? Because that's the way it goes. But Venus is out front of Mars, moving through the heavens, right? <clears throat> and to me, that is signaling, especially with this new beginning of a lunar cycle, this dark moon starts 14 months of a different lunar cycle. So if you guys have been really tired lately, just like pff, tired, I know I have, um, like there was a different kind of tired and now I'm like rejuvenated, but then now it's a, now there's another tired, but I do believe it's because of those stationing retrograde planets. And then also we are starting a new lunar cycle. So with this dark moon in um, Cancer, we will then, have one more full moon at Capricorn, right? In Cancer, uh, I mean, in Capricorn, but during Cancer season. And I and I can't stress enough how interesting that is too, that we have two full moon in Cancer right before Pluto retrogrades back into in, into Capricorn, right? It's, it's highlighting the way we work. It's highlighting the, what we thought was important. You know, Cancer's over here saying, you know, there's different ways to work. We just don't have to constantly pick one thing up and put one thing down. You know, that divine feminine energy is always working just as much as divine masculine energy. It's just a different way. It's just a different feeling. Um, it's a different pace. You know, it doesn't mean that things don't get done in a timely manner or whatever. It's just a different energy. And we've been working, integrating this energy for years now, for years, since that rise of that Me Too movement. And now this is it. I think it's fucking go time. <laughs> you know, I really do. So dark moon, cancer, one more full moon in Capricorn, um, which will be at 29 degrees of cancer. And then we'll start. Leo season. So then the first moon in Leo season will be that dark moon of Leo and then full moon Aquarius. So now we're moving into a different um, lunar cycle, right? Um, where we will have the conversation, the masculine and feminine will have the conversation first and uh, in a season and then express in the, uh, later on in the season when before we were starting full force, right? We were starting with the masculine and feminine apart from each other having that conversation, you know, hey, how are you doing over there? Having that conversation and then coming together to see, well, how's it, how's it working out? 
now we're starting differently. All of this. So Venus will be moving forward. Um, you know, the moon is supercharged right now because she's with the sun and she's with in her home sign. Um, and so the way we start working with ourselves, cancer, new boundaries, Venus boundaries, right? B Venus is in cancer. Um, it's going to start paving the way. The last six months of the year are going to be so different than the first six months of the year. Um, and I do believe it's because more of this feminine energy is rising within us, but also because our divine masculine energy is healed. When we talk about, you know, inner child wounding, um, you know, healing those things, it's healing both sides of us. It's just not one. It doesn't matter how you present. It doesn't matter what your pronouns are, but a lot of that inner child um, healing has been done. And now we're ready to move forward. We're going to be more creative. We're going to be asking different questions, um, you know, from the ground up, more power to the people. That's Pluto and Aquarius right before Pluto moves back to Capricorn. And it does that in, I think, September, just in time for the elections, right? So keep an eye on, you know, I think Britain's having an election right now. France is having an election right now. So keep an eye, a little eye on, you know, over there, as well as keeping an eye on here. and. Um, this is a time that we're going to have to start asking the hard questions. And this is the time we're going to have to start making hard boundaries. And this is the time where we, because we're still in our Pluto return, the USA is still in its Pluto return. Right. Um, and that is uh, re rebirth, right? Pluto is death. Pluto wants things to be, keep turning over. Right. It's just, it's no, st it's not stagnant. And we're in this huge shift and this huge push. Um, and it is, you know, we, I really want us to have a democracy for sure. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there for now. And then we can talk about the dark moon on the fifth. Just know there's probably going to be a lot of, I know it seems like a no brainer because we're with our families, but like conversations with ourselves like how do I still fit into this family unit do I still fit in this family unit what are my boundaries with this family unit um what are the differences now between like I see myself and my mother or how the difference between I see myself and my father what are the good boundaries for that right um the sun and the moon which is our personal planets is um you know sun and the moon and keep or, or, or sex or trining you know saturn in, in in neptune right now which is better for us to have a, a easier conversation with this for it to make more sense um and then this the moon is the cancer is the moon is the mother right and so the sun and the moon are in there together so and then start seeing how you are your own best parent now and i know we've talked about that a lot for years but it's got to have changed now right over the years like how you feel about yourself and um, how you nurture yourself and, and, and those kinds of things. So before I, before I get off, I am going to say one thing about Mars. Okay. Which will probably lead into another 10 minute rant, but hopefully you guys have drinks and uh, snacks as you're watching this, but Mars is in Taurus. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. Okay. Mars is in Taurus. So, so all this unrest and, and stuff is happening, but Mars is in Taurus. Mars does not move extremely fast in Taurus because Taurus is fixed earth, right? Venus is in Cancer. So Venus is talking to Mars, right? I think they're um, they're in a sextile, so that's 90 degrees. Um, and so she's like, what's going on over there? And Mars is like, hey, lady, um, I am coming up on this conjunction with Uranus. And Venus is like, yeah, he's been in there for a while. Um, and so Mars is the warrior planet, you know, is the warrior planet. I see him now more as a spiritual warrior. So when we're asking for decisions to be made fast and in fast movement and all this stuff, it's not going to be there. It's going to be a little bit slower. So you guys take your time. Mars isn't known for being strategic, correct? But because he's in a feminine sign, the feminine signs are known for being strategic. So he's talking to Venus, who's in Cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. 
And, you know, the moon is also known as Diana or Artemis, right? She's strategic. Okay. She's strategic. So Venus being in the sign of cancer can be talking to the moon, right? It can be like, okay, well, how about this? And then signaling shit back to Mars, right? Hey, why don't you wait a minute? You know, like give it a rest or hold on. Let me get into Leo, you know, I'll see you in a few degrees, right? Once I get into Leo, we'll we'll have another conversation. Um, but again, it's that feminine energy, right? Leading the way. So the way that we move forward tackling, <laughs> tackling uh, these problems is not going to look the way like it used to because that feminine energy is leading the way. The feminine energy is more strategic. And that is just saying from a mythological stance. Okay. For sure. Um, but also it is going to, but also with like trusting the intuition, right. Trusting, um, you know, we can't go on the status quo. Right. And if you're like, I don't know, we can't go on the status quo, like precedence, it was precedent. They didn't touch it. Oh, out the window. Right. Um, you know, and so all of this shifting is happening, but I do believe we're shifting into this feminine energy leading us moving forward. So a lot of us are going to be really okay with that. Um, and it's not that we're not going to be productive, right? Or just like laying around and all the stuff. We're going to be extremely productive. But the way that we are going to be more productive is being a little more strategic in the sense that look if we get gaslit we're going to have like a reaction but on the world stage that gaslighting reaction is is calming down is calming down that's the trend moving forward so keep that in mind um this is what my notes look like so you guys know this way right and i can't and i can't read them so good for me um but yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Um, as much as things are, you know, shit's hitting the fan, astrologically, things are looking good. But we have to zoom out and see the bigger picture. That is one thing for sure that needs to keep happening. And that is what's happening as well with this, with Neptune turning retrograde and Saturn turning retrograde. It's allowing us to zoom back out. Having two full moons in Capricorn is allowing us to look at the way we work, right? Twice illuminated with the masculine and feminine opposite of each other talking about it, right? Um, so I don't want to say it's a slowdown, but it's a shift. It's it's definitely a shift because I could sit here and say things are slowing down, but on the other hand, I'm like, things are really picking up, right? So it's a shift. Keep working with this shift, okay? All right, friends, I'll be back in a couple of days. As always, comments, please post them below. Um, questions, if I'm saying stuff and this is not making any goddamn sense, let me know. Um, and I'll be more than happy to clarify. Okay, until then, if you guys want to reach out to me on Instagram, I'm at independencestnola. Um, and then you guys, I'm also here too. So uh, have a great Wednesday. Um, have a happy 4th of July. You guys be safe, wear your seatbelts, use your blinkers, give everybody a little extra time. You know, there's going to be lots of people out and about. Don't drink and drive, all those things. Um, and really understand that a lot of this shit that pisses you off when you're here in America is because we have the freedom to get pissed off about it. Okay. A lot of other places, not so much. And we really need to start honoring that in a sense okay and if you don't think that other forces want to come in uh, they do they do okay i don't want to end on a like bummer note but have fun eat your tofu eat your barbecue whatever you guys do okay and i'll see you on the fifth